today's video, we are getting started on our pump organ project. We purchased this pump organ for $60 at the Deseret Industries thrift store and our intention is to use every single part of it to create new life because we have found that nobody really uses pump organs much anymore. So today we're just going to take this mirror portion of it and we're going to separate them because we think they're cooler apart. So watch us as we transform this into a mirror that can be hung on the wall as a shelf or put on top of a dresser. We're going to come out flush with the front. Up. We're going to be using DIYs, dark and decrepit. We're kind of towards the bottom of the barrel here, so I added some water in it to stretch it a little bit further, but we just need to darken this up for the base layer so it matches. If you want to purchase the products that we use today, be sure to visit jamierayvintage.com. I really like that this curved part matches with the curve here. Not a ton of detail, but just a little touch that's gonna to help tie that base into the top of this mirror. So I'm gonna be making a light yellow color for the base. I'm starting off with a white because when you wanna make a lighter color, if you start with a darker color, then inevitably you wind up mixing too much. So I'm gonna start with a one to one ratio of yellow to white swan and we'll see where that gets us. It makes white swan and queen bee. Here's the difference between full strength and half and half. Next step, I'm gonna scoop in my salt wash. This is just gonna add texture and help it bond to my piece. The backer comes off, so that's, that's lucky. I'm just gonna start brushing the salt wash on and we're gonna go with this fun kind of crosshatch pattern. We might get some peaks here and there, but mostly just adding texture. I don't necessarily even need full coverage because we're gonna go with a couple more coats of paint, but this is gonna make it look really nice and aged like it's been painted a bunch. We especially want to avoid too much salt wash up here. So I'm just gonna give it kind of like a light brush. I don't want to lose any of that texture. I don't want the salt wash building up, but we do want that color coming back through eventually. So I'm mostly just dry brushing here. Not a lot of salt wash at all on my brush. Okay, so we have quite a bit left over and I'm gonna go paint the back with it since we have extra. The next step is we're gonna be using milk paint over the top of this base color. So we've got Sweet Pickens Bluebird, which is a really soft gray blue color. And we're gonna mix it up with warm water. <laughs> one part milk paint to one part water. Warm water. Warm water. And we're gonna mix it up with our whisk here. If you want it really smooth, you can use an immersion blender, but obviously smooth is not uh, the name of the game for us, so. Not today. Not today it ain't. If not today, it, smooth paint, not today. If you let it sit for about 10 minutes after you mix it up, it'll get a little bit thicker, and if you need to, you can always add more paint. Next goes on the Bluebird milk paint. No extra bond in that? No extra bond in that really not necessary when you've got the salt wash base most of the time. So I was looking for like French, I don't know, like crusty old world type finishes, especially on mirrors. Everything was like blue, light blue, dark blue, baby blue, greenish blue, and white. And I was like, okay, well the good news is I like those colors, so that's what we're going with. After this, I think we need to probably go set it out in the sun. Are you gonna try to get down in that wood? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna paint the bottom too? Oh, well, someone puts this up on a wall. And you can see underneath it. Like, if they put posts underneath it, you can make like a faux fireplace. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Well, that chippy escalated fast. We set it out in the sun to dry and it got all kinds of chippy. We didn't add any extra bond and so we knew that this could happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be sanding it with our orbital sander and 220 sandpaper just to remove any of the loose chippy paint and then we'll be ready for the next step. Today we're using the leaf blower to blow off all of the sanding dust and all the chips so that we were ready. It works pretty well. 
I'm using a DIY white swan to come in and paint a lot of detail work. Two-tone really adds to the feel of the piece and adds some interest in all of these details. Originally, we were going for French country, but with this light blue and white, to me, it feels a little bit Scandinavian. This is just 220 grit. We're gonna lightly sand over the top of the white. It's got a little bit more chipping that it was gonna do because when we put the white swan on there, it kind of reactivated the milk paint again. We really like the added touch of the distressing. It makes the white less stark against the distressed blue and yellow. We're using Sweet Pickens beeswax in clear. We're gonna clear wax this first, that way it gives us a good base, because when we do colored waxes, which we are going to be doing in a minute here, if you have a clear wax base, it really helps you control how much that wax goes on there and where it goes. If you get somewhere you don't want it, it wipes off easily. Whereas if you just go on straight with the dark wax first or the white wax, that's gonna sink into the paint a little bit more and be hard to control where your wax is because both of these paints are porous before sealed. So we're gonna be white waxing over some of the detail and over the areas where the raw wood is showing. It's gonna to tone back that dark stain a little bit and kind of make it look like it's been aged and oxidized over time. So we're gonna be white waxing over some of the detail and over the areas where the raw wood is showing. It's gonna to tone back that dark stain a little bit and kind of make it look like it's been aged. Sometimes when you're working with milk paint, you have to be willing to let the milk paint do what the milk paint does. It's super chippy, more than we were expecting, and we kind of had to work with it. You always just got to trust the process, right? You know, you start out with one layer, add another layer, a lot flakes off and you're like, oh no, it's ruined. But then you add more layers and it comes together. Like most things in life, no risk, no reward. If you want to purchase the products that we use today, be sure to visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.